Hi, we're going to go through some of these Regents exams from New York State for physics and uh, see how to go about doing them. I strongly suggest you go to their website. You can download all the exams we're going to be using and you can play along with us. Good luck. We're starting with the June exam from 2007. We're going to start on page one and do this exam. Start off with question number one, which is not a vector quantity. First time I read this, I went looking for the vector. I want to look for a thing that isn't a vector. Let's well, see, electric charge is plus or minus. A vector is drawn with an arrow. And I don't remember drawing plus or minus with arrows. Magnetic field strength, we've been drawing magnetic fields with arrows. Velocity, that's always an arrow. And displacement, displacement has to do with uh, from a start to the end, and that's always drawn with a vector or an arrow. So which one is not a vector quantity? That would be choice one, an electric charge. The next question, an astronaut standing on a platform on the moon drops. Drops is a key word. Drops means that the initial velocity is equal to zero. So he drops a hammer. The hammer falls six meters. So the distance it falls is going to be six meters in a time of 2.7 seconds. So time is 2.7 seconds. What's the acceleration? So now we have our knowns and our unknown. We have to go to the formula sheet and find a formula that has those. The mechanics section of the equation sheet has lots of options. We start looking through average velocity, acceleration. We're looking, but no, velocity final. Here we go. Distance is equal to velocity initial times time plus one-half at squared. We have distance, we have initial velocity, we have time, and we're looking for acceleration. So that's the equation we need. Let's go ahead and off to the margin, write the equation down again. Distance equals vit plus one-half at squared. Velocity initial is zero, so we can get rid of that, which is why it was so important to list it over here. Distance equals one-half at squared. Algebra to get acceleration by itself. Both sides by 2 is 2d. Divide both sides by t squared is equal to acceleration. So 2d divided by t squared is a. So let's see if I can do this in my head. 2 times 6 is 12. 12 divided by 2.7 squared. Let's just call it 3 squared, and that would be 9. So 12 divided by 9 would be 1 point something. So we're looking for an answer that's uh, 1 point something. I'm going with that. There you go. Question three, a two kilogram object. So we're told the mass of this is equal to two kilograms. It's important that you remember that mass is kilograms. Uh, we're told the weight of this thing, it weighs 19.6 uh, newtons on the Earth. The acceleration due to gravity on Mars, so the acceleration due to gravity on Mars is 3.71 meters per second squared. What is the object's mass? This is a trick question. They just told you the mass, and they're asking you for its mass. The idea is that mass doesn't change. If you go to Mars, hopefully you have uh, the same amount of mass you had when you left. So the correct answer would be 2 kilograms. A car moving in a circular path with a constant speed, clockwise direction, as per the diagram. So it's uh, moving and it's changing direction and turning that way. When the car is in this position shown, the acceleration is directed towards. Well, it's maintaining a constant velocity, so it's not speeding up as it goes around a curve, but it is changing direction. So it's accelerating, and it's being accelerated inwards, centripetal acceleration. And in this particular position, inwards refers to east. So the correct answer for this question would be east. Question five, is the angle between two concurrent forces? Concurrent means that they're acting on the same object. As the angle between those two forces decreases, the magnitude of the force required to produce equilibrium or to keep it balanced. All right, well, let's look at the situation first. We've got two forces. Let's pick uh, four newtons and three newtons. And we'll put them at 90 degrees because that's kind of convenient. The result of that would be a 5 newton force. So a 4 and a 3 at 90 degrees would result in 5, so it would require 5 newtons to keep it in equilibrium. 5 newtons to balance it out. 
So now the angle between them decreases. So let's not mess around. Let's just bring it right down to zero. Let's take a four and a three and have them at zero degrees. Well, the result of that, would, of course, would be seven newtons. And it would require seven newtons acting in the opposite direction to keep that in equilibrium. So let's go back and read the question. As the angle decreases, the magnitude of the force required to produce equilibrium, well, it gets bigger. It increases. So the force increases in order to keep that thing balanced. Question six. A child walks five meters north, four meters east, and then finally two meters south. Well, let's draw this. Five meters and then four meters east, and then two meters south. What is the magnitude of the resultant displacement? So again, we don't care about the path. We just want to know from start to finish, how far did they go? Well, they went up five and then down two. So basically, they went up three. And then they went over four. Well, now we have our three, four, five right triangle. So this has got to be five meters total displacement. And there's the correct answer, five meters. Question seven has a diagram. It represents a spring hanging vertically that stretches 0 0.075 meters when a five Newton block is attached. The spring system is at rest. So let's look at this picture. And sure enough, there it is, a five Newtons of force. So our force is equal to five Newtons. It's causing it to stretch 0 0.075 meters. Now we list this as distance X, the distance that a string stretches. And this is because a string, a spring can also be uh, squeezed. We can make it smaller or we can stretch it, and make it longer. And so we want one variable to refer to both of those events. So that's going to be 0 0.075 meters. And let's go look. Uh, they want to know the spring constant. I can't remember spring constant. What is that? That was a while ago. Let's find it. What I'm going to do here is just look at my formula sheet and say, okay, where's, what do I got? I got accelerations, energies, normal forces, force on a spring. So there's force on a spring. That's interesting. Ah, uh, K, spring constant. Look at that, I got it marked. Spring constant is K. So somehow I want the variable K into this equation. K and the force on a spring. So now I can go to the mechanics section and find, I just start looking through until I find a formula that has force on a spring and K. See what I can do. There it is, right here force on a spring is equal to kx. So my equation, force on a spring is equal to kx. I'm looking for spring constant in this problem. So I got to solve for k. k is equal to f divided by x. So 5 newtons divided by 0 0.075 meters. And even if I forgot the equation, my units would tell me that. Newtons divided by meters. Just take my newton value and divide it by my meters value and see what number I get. And when you get your calculator out, I believe you end up with something pretty close to this. Page one is done.